Hello Mac Warriors, how is it going? Welcome to your daily dose of Mac Warrior Online. Today I'm playing the Hunchback 2C and I'm playing it in a sniper loadout. I'm having two gauze rifles, honestly because I wanted to chill a bit today. So this one is very slow paced, it is a very safe build because you can just keep your distance at 600 and above meters, you have very high mounts, you can just hide behind cover and you're just punching big holes into the enemy's armor from a safe distance while your team is fighting on the front line and is killing everybody. So this one is, is, it's just cool to play and therefore I'm doing it today. So let's have a look at that. I've got two Gauss rifles, one in each side torso and those, those are very heavy. So those weight 12 tons, tons each and, and that is, that is massive. And that makes it so that I needed to make space from other components to make this one work. So I stripped the armor on the arms because I don't need them. I, I stripped them completely to have some weight out of that. And I went down with the XL engine rating to 200. 200 is massive. It's really slow for a medium mech. But we are playing a sniper here. So this playstyle is, is very static most of the time. And we are running at 69.7 kph with speed tweak. And most of our heavy mechs are running at the same speed anyway. So we can easily keep up with them. If, if we're getting in trouble, we are going just over to them and it should be fine. So 69 is, is just at, at the limit I would play that mech. And the XL200 is the engine, the lowest engine rating that only requires two additional heat sinks to work. So I think this is the most efficient way to do that. So we put up two more tons in that, uh, having that XL engine that weighs 7.5 tons. So that makes the engine weight uh, 9.5 tons, which is really, really low at a very reasonable speed, I would say. Uh, I've got seven tons of ammo. And as you can see, the ammo distribution is a bit odd, but that's just because Gauss ammo does not explode, so you can just put it anywhere you want without taking any risk here. And therefore I put a lot of ammo into the legs, into the center torso, into the head. Just because if I lose a side torso, I'd rather lose another heat sink, because I don't need any external heating here, uh, than ammunition. So I really want to preserve that here and therefore I put it into the legs and into the center torso. That's the only reason why. And I've got a jump jet, which is not for pop tarting, but for mobility. So uh, that sniper here, it really benefits from high ground and that jump jet, it just helps you getting into elevated position. It's just that. So there will no jump shot shenanigans uh, be, uh, be possible with that. It's just again for mobility here. So the modules are advanced zoom because shooting at long range just benefits from that. But sometimes it's just good to target your weak spots of the enemy better and therefore you have that advanced zoom module. Uh, I don't have the, the Ghost Rifle Cool Shot and the Range module because I'm just saving up for more mechs to do some builds with and the modules will be gone anyway sometime soon, so why bothering taking that? The last module slot would be probably uh, a rated deprivation just to avoid missiles. So whenever uh, I see a sniper on the ridge, I just try to suppress them and getting rid of those missiles is, is just generally a good idea. The consumables are an improved UIV, which I mainly use for defensive purposes. So uh, once in a while I'm just popping it randomly, just because I want to know if I'm in danger to get backstabbed by a light hunting pack when I set up my position. So that one really helps. Uh, it gives away your position, of course, so be, be aware when you are putting that one up. But again, at the same time, sometimes you get a bit of value out of that when you are in danger of getting backstabbed. And I've got an improved airstrike here just because to put up some, some additional damage when needed. You don't need any cool shots here again because the Gauss Rifles, they are at a very nice heat management. They only consume one heat when they are shot, so it's basically nothing at all. One very quick side note before we begin. The Gauss Rifle, uh, its maximum range used to be triple the, the optimal range and that's not the case anymore. So our maximum range is 1.3 kilometers and non, not 1.9 as it used to be before. So take that into consideration when you are playing that one here. If you're an old school player, uh, it's 1.3 kilometers. And yeah, you should take that in mind. Anyway, that's the build. I wish you all a lot of fun with the two games that are coming. I definitely have that. And uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. And I think now it's time to hit the battlefield. All right, first game of the day. We are playing Polar Highlands. And I did not vote for that. I want to make a statement here. I voted for River City. I wanted to have a challenge, but we are getting Polar Highlands in Skirmish. And I don't know if that is good or not. I've got already some complaints because some of my dudes have short range loadouts. And it could be a challenge to actually fight here. Just because 
Uh, when the team needs to go in, you have to go with them. So staying staying alone outside of the fight is not a good idea in a long range duel. You, sh you should just walk with the team. Just because, uh, first of all, you could be hunted down by light max, and when you have no support at all around you, then you are just dead. And uh, secondly, you want to have a good line of sight to, to the enemy. And um, when there's a push and the enemy is probably retreating, then uh, they can get to cover and then you need to move up anyway. Or the worst case would be that your team is just pushing and is obstructing, obstructing the line of sight towards your, toward, towards your foes. So, so cheater? make sure that you yeah. set up a good position hmm. either in the flank or just walk with the team nine, and nine. shoot your ghost rifles point oh, blank. Oh, that is oh, possible, yeah, that is yeah. absolutely possible. So don't be afraid going in like that. You have a maximum range of 1.3 kilometers uh, and a, a minimum range of zero. So you could basically yeah, fight point blank with ghost rifles. However, it is it is not, not that good because usually the ghost rifles have a long cooldown, you need to take your time to aim yeah, and everything. So engage. it's kind of a DPS weapon and not, not that super burstish uh, brawling like weapon rifle, usually. Yep. Alright, so that being said, we are just again walking with the oh, team fuck. and try to find ourselves some enemies. Raven sniper at, what is that, J7 or something like that? J7 you say? Oh yeah, there's uh, some guy shooting at me. So let's shoot back. However, that is yeah, absolutely out of range. We shall here. not do that. I'm a bit sad that the Ghost Rifle was limited to its uh, double the maximum range. It used to be triple the, the nominal range, so we could shoot at 1.8 kilometers. But it's not the case anymore, and therefore, yeah, give me a second. I'll get over yeah, we need to get yeah. close somehow. I, I9 H9. So they always come this way. I9 H9, you say? Yeah, there's something going on. So the best spot would be, of course, in the Main flanks of the nice enemy, but since we are approaching them face to face, second. I'm just going ahead and shoot at them. Alright, uh, the good thing Double is we could probably take out, out his arm. Oh, okay. So if you just remove him from his ER PPCs, he wouldn't be scary anymore, and I'd try that. Did I hit that? No, it was probably a shoulder, but anyway. So yeah, you could either destroy the mech or just cripple it so much that he can't fight back properly. And when he is at that condition, you can just ignore him. There are multiple ways to actually deal with enemies. You don't necessarily need to kill them. This guy. Okay. Solid shot there. That's Supernova. Hello. <laughs> Did that hit the ground? Really? Group up, guys. We're gonna get fucking walled because we're scattered to six fucking grids. Did that hit the ground to an invisible wall here? That would be a shame. Okay, that hit at least. Push Charlie. Gotta make sure that I stay in motion here, so that I won't get hit too much by the enemy. Okay, destroyed an New arm, target. which was Acquired. not that important because we have weapons in there. But we're just continuing to, to fight them. And this is what I said before. So you don't want to fall behind and get shot by the enemy. Rifleman you want to walk mouse. with the team. I lost an arm, but again, there is no no weapon in it, no equipment in it, no problem with that. But anyway, it was kind of mm, point just being more. exposed like that. Okay, let's see. I need some more targets. Because again, I need to deliver my damage over time. And uh, I need to Damn, we have make sure that I get to cover when my ghost rifle is charging and then I'm getting up again. You already see that, right? Good. Even Jack. Yeah, let's destroy him. Raven's trying to kill me. Okay, he has just one ghost rifle left and he will be taken down in a second. So, Jesus, there he goes. To push Cody the act. I-8 group is Charlie, 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 behind you, not like Rifleman is good. So I always want to go to the ones that are in, in, in optimal range and this one is. He is in 500 meters away and I don't want to shoot beyond that if not necessary. Okay, that was an invisible wall again. Who's shooting there? That's the blackjack. Hello. Good shot to the center torso, but again, he is too far away. He's 900 meters away. I really want to shoot at 600 and something. New target that supernova acquired. there is my perfect target. He's big, he's chunky, he's in the open. And I again missed that shot somehow. Supernova's open, Chris. No, oh, that went through his arm. But he's dead. There were right. six of them off so the let's shoot at Cody. Fucking... And I will just pop an airstrike onto his head. Will I? 
Yeah, let's do it. Careful, airstrike. That may or may have may or may not have been a good idea there. Okay, yeah. come on. I screwed up my airstrike. And I screwed up that shot. Alright, let's focus again. Let's well, kill the Kodiak. He is centered and he is uh, just a matter of time until he's dead. <laughs> okay. So the blackjack there. That was not the center torso. Also, that's another blackjack. Alright, let's just deal with him. Get close. Problem is that my right torso is open. Got an urban mech there. That raven's critting open. Okay, let's not deal with the I'm urban first. It's not too scary. But again, those visible, invisible walls here. I hate Got it when it. it happens. Aligned your shot perfectly, and then it just hits the ground because of some clipping stuff here. Alright, let's just fuck the mad dog up. He has only now one he SRM left. But there are still some enemies left. I don't know where they are. And I'm a bit scared because my right torso is open. So let's just find them. The UAV. Should I bother with it? Yeah, no. Panther open in the back. Alright, that did not hit. Yeah, and it's kind of a chill play, you know, you just charge up your ghost rifle, align your shot, and then you fire them. Problem is the long cooldown, as I said before. Alright! Got a supply cache, and I think I'm going to make that a habit. So whenever I get a supply okay. cache in my videos, I will open it. Maybe there's something yeah. interesting in it. So let's have a look at the end score before we get over to the supply cache and then to the next game. Uh, it's 516 damage. Uh, that is quite decent for a gauze carrier here. I got one kill. I got three components destroyed and nine assists. So everybody, good round. But again, it was Paula Island. It's kind of expected to, to go down that way when you have long range stuff on the battlefield. Yeah, anyway, let's go over and uh, open the supply cache here. So, let's go to the inventory, let's open that supply cache and see what's inside. So, we have the potential to win that Screaming Surat, and I really want that. I really hope that I can get my hands on that one sometime soon. Because uh, I like the Clapping Surat cockpit item, and this would be a nice addition. I would probably put that one in every mech I'm reporting. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, Surat is going away. Oh, we got a Clan XL320! Oh, that's good, actually. I don't own that yet, and I think I can do a lot of stuff with that going uh, ahead and put that in my Marauder to Seas or Supernovas. That is good, so thank you for that. Alright, second game, we are playing Conquest, we are playing Domination, and we want to get up here as fast as possible to shoot everybody that is trying to approach. Now, um, the enemy is coming from there, and we need to get to like Delta 5 fish uh, to actually stay in cover and, and be safe. Uh, as I said before, Staying alive it has a big priority in this one. Don't just uh, stick to one spot and let yourself get hunted down. And uh, yeah, I just want to get off some shots, maybe one or two. Uh, anybody already there? No. Uh, and then I want to get to cover and I want to stick to my team and such. So that is the basic plan here. Uh, nobody here. Alright, so then uh, we are going over to check out Charlie 5, Bravo 5. Yeah, they are coming. Pew! All right, we are just staying here, waiting for our cooldown, going in again. And I think I can afford one or two more until I need to bail. All right, early damage is the key to win the game, actually. So that Atlas there has a problem because his armor his oops, is uh, the thing that he relies on the most. Is it is it's just gone now. It is punched with a big hole. Or two or three. Look at that. His right torso, uh, left torso, almost dead. Nothing he can do. However, again, I need to get to uh, my team. I hope that they are covering this canyon here. So that I can get out again. Because I don't want to sit down here. Uh, it's not a good spot for a sniper. I want to get elevated ground. And uh, I really hope that nobody's shooting my back now. So I'm just running forward. To be as fast as possible. Alright, I think I made it. Yeah, good. Uh, maybe not because I just ran into a guy. <laughs> anyway, so we've got a linebacker here, which we are missing. And he's kind of suiciding. Yeah. Shoot him. And then we're fine. 
So we are in the midst of our team. We have a perfect spot here. Uh, the only thing that could happen is that they would push that circle. And then I would drop to the right. Just to avoid the shots. But apart from that, they are below. We are having high ground here. And it should be fine, honestly. Again, the only thing that I need is targets. And therefore I'm just running over that bridge here. Taking cover behind that rock formation. We're shooting from here now. New Good. Target acquired. Stay in motion a bit. And then we're shooting New that marauder to see. Acquired. Unfortunately, that went to his arm, I think. But it's fine. Acquired. So advanced zoom, zoom, of course, it helps targeting my prey here. And he is in perfect range. He is at 500 something meters. And we are just continue shooting him just to soften him up as much as possible. That is incoming and I'm again going for the shoulder because that one is squishy, uh, squishier than the center torso. And maybe we can take out some of his weapons. Okay, that was a bit unfortunate here. Yeah, I went back too much. So let's get up front again and the, the loadout is a bit odd because it has not that big mobility. So, you need to think ahead what you want to do with that. Okay, I won't shoot him. But the Atlas again is a perfect target for me. And I will continue again pawning into his shoulder, which is already gone. Great. So, let's work on his center torso then. And he is down in a second. Yeah, good job everybody. So again, setting up this position here was kind of crucial. The enemy was more or less pinned. They couldn't do anything, they couldn't go back and cover because I was focusing that flank. And they couldn't go forward either because my team was awaiting them there. And then they had to expose th themselves uh, in that centerpiece there. And they were just being destroyed. It was kind of, um, yeah, thinking ahead of what they would do and uh, it absolutely worked out. So I think I did not deal top damage here, but I absolutely played my role. Let's have a look at the end score before we close the video. Come on, end screen, pop up. There we go, 400 damage. I dealt 18 team damage. I think that was one of the last shots here uh, where I tried to hit the bushwhacker and did not hit him, uh, but one of my teammates. But anyway, it was a very good round. We won that in a stomp and I am very happy about the outcome. That was your Ghost Rifle Hunchback 2C. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a rating or subscribe to the channel. And if you want to super subscribe, go down below to the description. There's a link to my Patreon page. There you can support me and uh, yeah, help me keeping doing that while I'm doing here. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, everybody. Goodbye.